Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, J.K. Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today we're going to be talking about another aspect of the porn addiction cycle, and that is the stage of being triggered. Now, earlier on, we spoke about the dormant stage, which is a very deceptive stage because it lasts days, months, or years, and it's where there's no significant, rather there are no significant urges to view pornography or to masturbate for various reasons. It's a dangerous stage because it lulls you into the belief that everything is under control. At some point, eventually, you will get triggered. And triggers, when they first occur, they may seem to come out from the blue. I have, you have no idea where they actually originated. But I want to make it clear that your triggers are never random. There are four main reasons why you're triggered. The first is due to very strong emotions. And these are emotions which are often unique to you. Some men are triggered by anger. Some are triggered by sadness. And some are triggered by a cocktail of different emotions. The second cause for your triggers is going to be stress. And this is a very common one. And this is all biochemical. Both your strong emotions and stress are all biochemical situations that lead you to using pornography to change the way that you feel. Another one is loneliness or a lack of intimacy. And finally, there are unresolved issues or trauma. In all these cases, again, when you are unaware of your cycle, when you are unaware of your behavior, you just feel that you were randomly triggered. I often speak to men and ask them, well, what led to that trigger? And they're unable to identify it. They just say, well, I just, I felt horny. I, it was just random. It just happened. It never just happened. If you're a man who's out of control behavior with pornography started with your overexposure to high speed internet porn, that means you started watching pornography and you just kept watching it repeatedly until your brain rewired to that being your preference then you're going to find yourself viewing porn and masturbating after the dormant period based on opportunity. It's always going to be based on an event or a circumstance which has created an opportunity for you to slip. And some examples are being away from pornography for months or weeks, and then suddenly you have access to a piece of technology which isn't secured. Maybe it's your wife's iPad. Maybe you stay in an Airbnb that has a TV connection or has Netflix or has pornography on it. Maybe you stay in a hotel that has the same. Maybe your phone breaks and you buy a new phone. You have this new piece of technology which is unsecured and you end up viewing pornography on it. For some men, it's usually you don't have the opportunity to view pornography at home because you don't work at home. You work at work. When you come home, you're spending time with your loved ones. You find yourself uniquely working at home. You find yourself creating a space for yourself to work uninterrupted at home. And then you end up slipping because there's this new form of isolation. Prior to this whole COVID-19 deal, it could have been a business trip. So when you're at home with your family, everything's okay. You're going through the dormant phase. But the moment you go on a business trip, you find yourself acting out. Make no mistake, you may often hear me talking about men who compulsively masturbate uh, every day, and you may be one of the men who uses that as a rationalization, which is nothing more than an excuse to ignore your behavior or to downplay and minimize your behavior. Just because you only act out on business trips, just because you only act out two or three times a year compulsively, does not mean that you don't have an addiction. It just means that your addiction is at a lower level. The threat of your addiction is not what it's going to do to you over time. It's not the threat that, oh, my addiction is going to increase in intensity. There are many men who go on for, they live their life for years and years, for decades, and they completely ignore them. But as I mentioned, when I talked about the dormant period, all of this compounds. 
Sometimes it's only a matter of time before it affects your relationship. It's only a matter of time before you get busted for maybe calling an escort. It's only a matter of time before you end up viewing pornography at work and getting caught. It's only a matter of time before your wife finds out about your behavior and your secrets. It's not worth it. Also, this has an impact on your life. The time and money that you spend to hide your behavior, all of that racks up. That's why often when it comes to men, high profile men, that's one of the places where you see it more often. Suddenly people are finding out about this man's behavior and all the things that he did in the past sexually. But this is often because he did not identify it as a problem. He was living in his dormant stage and he completely ignored his triggers. He just thought it was a behavior or a habit and he minimized it. The risk is always the same. It just takes one event to change your life. And when I say change your life, I mean for something devastating to happen to your life and turn it all upside down. There are even cases where some men are dormant and they are not triggered until there's a new attractive person at work. So every time there's a new attractive woman at work, suddenly you're triggered. You're thinking of this person, you're obsessing over this person, you want to have sex with this person, you want to meet them, and suddenly you're viewing pornography again at home. So they vary, but brother, you get the idea. I'd like you to take a moment and actually identify how you are triggered out of your dormant stage. All triggers lead to a negative emotional state. So to be specific, when you are dealing with unresolved issues in your life or you're dealing with trauma, you're often going to be put into an emotional state of anxiety or numbness. So whenever you feel that you're experiencing a lot of anxiety due to being triggered because of your trauma, or maybe you are finding yourself in a really unresolved situation that has to do with your finances, an unresolved issue that you have with relationships that keeps coming back, it's quite natural to suddenly feel anxiety for a period of time. In some cases, you may just feel emotionally numb. And the only way that you can soothe yourself is through porn and masturbation or acting out sexually. For those men who are triggered by a lack of intimacy, maybe you're a man who plays the game of being in a relationship and feeling that being in a relationship is a solution to your out-of-control behavior, I, I got to go off on a second and, and, and talk about this. I think it's appalling when counselors, when therapists, especially those who are religious, tell somebody that their behavior is going to be taken care of when they get married, that the problem is they're not married. This is a very archaic view that, oh, you're single, that's why you're masturbating all the time. Like, I mean, that it's common sense. But if this person is engaging in a, in a compulsive behavior with masturbating, you've got to be able to realize that it's crossing a certain boundary. It's a little too much. You can't just give this blanket solution that marriage and matrimony is going to change this. It's very irresponsible. And if you're out there and you have somebody who is encouraging you to do that, I urge you to kind of take that advice with not just a, a pinch of salt, but a full tablespoon of salt. Be very wary of that. When you struggle with a lack of intimacy, there are other issues that need to be handled. You're often going to experience the emotion of loneliness, rejection, or when you experience isolation. And even when you're in a relationship, when you're married or you're dating someone, you can get to a point where it feels a little bit suffocating. When you experience any of these emotions and you are medicating a lack of intimacy, the need to feel better and to self-soothe is often going to be the cause of your relapse. So again, awareness of your triggers is very important. And not just awareness of your triggers, but awareness of the different issues that you're medicating. Now, in our programs, one of the first things we do is we quickly identify what you're medicating, and that allows us to be able to put together a custom plan for you. If we find that you have a lot of unresolved issues and you want to control your behavior right away, we quickly start identifying the emotions that you experience the most that move you out of the dormant stage. If you are struggling with a lack of intimacy, then we quickly start identifying 
the emotions which are triggering you to act out. It's often isolation. It's often actually being in a relationship, feeling like that person is either too close to you or is putting you in a situation where you feel that you need to push them away, which is funny because um, you would think that somebody who was dealing with a lack of intimacy would be happy in a relationship. But often you've lived your life so long with that lack of intimacy and that lack of intimacy is a sign of another problem that cannot be solved by being in a relationship. So when you're actually in a relationship, you'll find that you feel suffocated after a certain period of time, right? In fact, those are the men who feel suffocated the most. And then you start viewing pornography and masturbating. So that's one of the first things we do. We identify it, and then we start teaching you the coping skills to deal with that. So brothers, that's what I have to say on triggers today, triggers which move you out of the dormant stage. And in a couple of days, we'll be talking about the next stage of the addiction cycle. Now, if you have more questions about triggers, if you're curious about what your triggers are, and if you feel that maybe you're struggling with more than one issue that you're medicating, I highly recommend that you join our Facebook group and ask any questions that you have. I'm very active there. When I'm tagged, I often respond via video. So there's a link to join our Facebook group in the description of the podcast below. Also, if you don't have a copy of my ebook and you'd like to learn about my system, well, get a copy. It's called Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men. There's a link to it in the description of the podcast below as well. I'm JK, your brother in the struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you in a couple of days.